conferences, piles of flyers, getting stuck on endless email lists, never-ending calls. There's an easier way to sort through and find the best school fundraisers. Simplify the search. School Zone Podcast proudly presents the 10 Top School Fundraising Ideas for 2017, a guide of top fundraising companies hand-picked from the best podcasts. As an added bonus, it lists five awesome resource companies that would add tremendous value to your school and students. That's right, a guide to 10 top fundraising companies and five resource companies, all for one low price. Ready to simplify the search? Go to schoolzonepodcast.com forward slash shop. Welcome to School Zone School Fundraising Ideas Podcast. We interview top fundraising and resource companies to help you find a solution to your next school fundraising or school resource need. This week, we are highlighting five great fundraising and resource companies that you need to check out. Are you ready to simplify the search? Now, here's your host, Matt Miller. Hey, hey, School Zone podcast listeners, Matt coming at you. I am here with J.C. Barb. Uh, a fire aid. JC, thanks for coming by the show. And uh, man, tell us a little bit about yourself and about your program. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate being here. Uh, this is our first year in fundraising, but our company has been in uh, production for over 30 years. Our company is actually called Fire Service Plus, and we manufacture firefighting foams and firefighting equipment for fire departments nationwide and globally. So we're in 41 different countries. Um, and in the past few years, we took the firefighting foam idea and we put it into an aerosol can for use uh, around the home. So for consumer use um, as an alternative to fire extinguishers. So uh, Fire Aid is probably, and in, in, I have to say, indefinitely the greenest firefighting foam that there is. It's biodegradable. We've had certifications, $3 million in certifications that talk about how effective it is. It's non-toxic, toxicity reports. So we're addressing the issues of the industry uh, for use of a product like this and also thinking about it in terms of a consumer product. So what type of product do you want to have in your home to protect you and your family is not necessarily always a fire extinguisher, although everybody needs a fire extinguisher in their home. But for a minor fire, a stovetop fire, something when you're cooking out, uh, pit fires, you could use something like FireAid to put that fire out effectively and, and not worry about it. So um, we've been going into the retail market. We're in uh, multiple grocery stores at this point. I think it's 25,000 retail stores and grocery shops, and we started in hardware stores. And out of that, we got the idea that um, it doesn't just work to stop and and, um, extinguish fires. It's effective as a coolant as well. So the reason it's such an effective fire suppression system is that it takes the heat out of the fire. So instead of just smothering it with a powder, Um, you get this great uh, cooling effect. So people are now using it in their workshops. So mechanics, welders, um, people that grill may use it to cool the grill when they're done, tailgate parties and cookouts. Uh, So it's it's been um, eye-opening process as we go into the retail markets with this, how effective it is, and clean and green. So uh, out of that, somebody had the great idea that it would be a, a super alternative for schools or scouts or churches that do fundraising initiatives. Um, to do a community service project around this where they focus on a fire safety awareness campaign, um, you know, burn awareness, fire safety awareness. So we prepared uh, with the NFPA um, a list of facts, a quiz, and a, a map for parents to work on with their kids to get out of their home. As part of the fundraising process for these cans, you then are able to give them the means to protect themselves in the event of an emergency, but also for use around the house for other things, like I mentioned before, grilling, cooking out. So let's go back a minute. You talked about the cans versus a fire extinguisher. So why is there an why is there a differentiation there? Or what what do people need to know about that to begin with? Sure. So uh, rated fire extinguishers are necessary in establishments, businesses. They have gauges on them, and they are inspected on a regular basis. So that's done. Um, that's that's done through mandates, and that's excellent. But in your home, you may not need one, and no one is going to tell you that you have to have one. And for uh, a child or uh, somebody who's elderly, they may be so intimidated by that that it just sits in the event of an emergency. Uh, fire extinguishers use a dry powder, a dry chemical powder, 
and Fire, Fire Aid uses a foam, which washes clean with water, it's non-toxic, uh, so you don't really have to worry about the long-term effects of it. Um, it's also, instead of being you know, a one-time use like an extinguisher, it sprays like a can of wasp spray. So you spray it from the top, uh, you put that fire out, and then you may still have fluid to use later on. So you might use it in the kitchen, you might use it uh, outside, you might take it camping with you or, or uh, to a party. Keep, I keep two cans in my car. Wow. So just, just to give you guys a visual, because this is obviously just audio, it looks just like a big can of shaving cream, essentially, right? Or a big can of, like, wasp spray or something. Exactly. Um, very, very similar to that. And um, does it work pretty much exactly like, as far as the use of it, you know, exactly like a fire extinguisher does? Or, I mean, how does... You're going to notice um, the spray is you get a 10 to 15 foot spray on it, like a can of wasp spray, and it's going to foam from that as well. So it's going to really closely resemble the way that you use a wasp spray. And um, in fact, some people use it as a wasp spray because it's a clean alternative to that wasp chemical as well. So I've, I've used it before that way. It's kind of effective. But we really focus on it for the cooling and the fire suppression system as well. Um, it's not going to go, uh, I'm sure you've seen um, the video where somebody will spray and test a fire extinguisher and that powder goes everywhere. Um, so you get a really focused spray with the fire aid. It allows you to kind of target an area. Um, it, the foam continues to foam and work, and, and that's why the fire departments like it. So one of the things that I you touched on, which I think is great, is many schools have a challenge when it comes to man there's all these really cool ideas for raising money but because of the uh this the service project aspect to this it, it i see it as a way that they can they can do a service project right and raise some money at the same time instead of this is one of our fundraisers you know what i mean right because because there's distinct differentiations in many of the schools around the country with the work that I've, I've been doing in them for about a decade. So talk a little bit about the program, how you guys help them implement that, and then let's talk about the fundraising aspect as well. Sure. Um, it was important to us to frame this around a community service project because the opportunity is endless there, and we've already had a lot of really great ideas. Um, we've, we've seen Boy Scouts kind of take it business to business to get the businesses involved in these fundraisers. So the businesses then buy maybe a case for the business and buy a case for the Scouts. The Scouts then go and donate those in the community where people probably wouldn't spend money on a fire extinguisher. So there's that, that's a community service project in itself that your community can get behind. Uh, the other part of this is um, doing an assembly where you do fire awareness. So October is Fire Safety Awareness Month. September is National Prep Month, so in the event of an, uh, um, a catastrophic emergency, you might have a, a prep kit that's got, you know, water, food, matches. Well, if you're going to start a fire, we always want you to have something to put the fire out with, so maybe a can of fire aid at that point. So there's a lot of different uh, ways that you could frame this as a community service project, namely education on fire safety, because there's just not enough of it. Um, another really great uh, portion of our company, a portion of the sales from every can go back to an uh, organization that um, helps ch child burn survivors. So that group, the Ronnie Thames organization, the Ronnie Thames Foundation works with the Shriners to supply funds to families who are going through burn treatment for their children. Um, that organization has funded a room uh, where families can stay with their children while they're being treated. And uh, they've opened another wing in Atlanta. So we have um, that group has done something in Galveston and Cincinnati and now in Atlanta. And then we go out, uh, we volunteer our time with the fire departments going door to door. The fire departments will install smoke detectors where there are none and they'll replace batteries where they need to. And uh, we donate a can of fire aid when we do those initiatives. So there's really great alternatives to that program and you could swing it any way as community service project, but make money in the meantime if you chose to do it as a sale. So talk, talk about the sales side and the fundraising side. Okay, then. so, and I'll just speak for, you know, if the schools come directly to me because we are the source and there are some dealers that, that carry this as well, but through us, um, the retail price of this can is $15. 
And when schools or churches come to us, it's uh, their price is eight per can. So they make $7 profit. Um, so they can turn profit around pretty quickly. And we've had schools that have done this um, in tandem with their fire department. So maybe the fire department hosts an assembly or an education session, but then they provide the means for people to order a can or buy a can. Shipping is free and there are no minimums. Wow, that's really, really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we, but more importantly, it's that the whole idea of the company is to keep people safe. So from Fire Service Plus to Fire Aid and, and what we do, it's all about safety. We, we sponsor um, uh, NHRA top field driver Leah Pritchett, and uh, they use Fire Aid on the track when those cars combust or catch fire. That's not the only motorsport that we're participating in, it's just the most common. Um, you'll, you may see us a little more frequently. So guys, this is really cool. Um, one of the things I love on School Zone is to get companies like these guys on because it's not just about the raising of the money. It's about, in this case, teaching kids about fire safety, benefiting communities along the way as well. And um, just that added benefit to to the potential raising money or whatever. So, JC, I, I'm, I'm excited to have you on. Uh, I knew nothing about your program, really, except for walking by and seeing the video video that you got running down right. there and all that stuff, which is cool enough in itself. But um, really, really, really cool. If, if people want to reach out to you to find out more about the program and potentially bring something like this to their school, um, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, they can give us a call. Um, our number is 770-460-7793. We're right outside of Atlanta. And uh, my email address is jcbarb, B-A-R-B, at fireaid.com. And aid is spelled A-D-E in this case. Uh, but uh, Google it. Uh, it'll take you to our website or our Facebook. And we're really active on social media. So we look for people to participate, show us how they use it, um, you know, show us where they found it. So we, we want to be involved. And, uh, we're having fun with it. Awesome. Well, JC, I, I hope this event is, uh, is big for you guys. Appreciate you taking a few minutes to enter the school zone. And have a great rest of the weekend. All right. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks for listening to the School Zone's School Fundraising Ideas Podcast. And for simplifying the search, be sure to subscribe to the show so you don't miss an episode. When you do, please leave us a five-star review in iTunes or your podcast player of choice. Victor Hugo once wrote, To learn to read is to light a fire. Every syllable that is spelled out is a spark. Wouldn't you agree that readers are thinkers and readers and thinkers change the world? That's why we offer Marlon and Percy good and wholesome reading for kids from 4 to 13. Marlon and Percy comics and graphic novels follow the adventures of two superhero apes and best friends as they fight crime rings, subdue wacky villains, and overthrow half-baked plans of world domination. Marlon and Percy are also fighting with you against another deadly villain, illiteracy. Scattered throughout the clean and wholesome content are vocabulary increasing words with definitions. Marlon and Percy comics and our novel can be found on Amazon or MarlonandPercy.com. Save $9 now on the 7 comic ebook bundle at MarlonandPercy.com. Just use the code APEPOWER. Marlon and Percy, heroes, best friends, apes. Order your books now 